Alright, so the Sony a7 IV has arrived, at least here in the States and at my doorstep, and so I figured I would do an unboxing of it and just offer some of my first impressions of the camera. Now I'm going to be covering a lot of different a7 IV related content regarding this camera over the coming weeks, so feel free to subscribe if you like content around the a7 IV, and feel free to let me know in the comments below if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see covered about this camera, because I have a bunch of ideas of things I know I want to learn and talk about, but I'm definitely curious to hear what you want to see as well. So. Without further ado, we have the A7 IV box, which I have a separate little product kind of angle I've set up here. I'm just sort of rotating the box around so you can get a sense for what you have here. I'll show separately on screen how this box compares to some of the other Sony camera boxes since I am personally a box hoarder. I know Sony's updated the design on these boxes a bit, but it looks to be around the same A7 III box size. So let's open it. So when you first open the box here, you're really just greeted with the Sony manuals. Not too much to really talk about there, since you can find the documentation online anyway. Now once I fold forward this flap, we have sort of the goods of the camera, which I will show as well. Hopefully this product angle works out here. Now I'm going to move this slightly to the side, just so I can talk about the different contents here. So we have the A7 IV strap that it comes with, which I'm not sure how many people actually end up using this, but nevertheless, not bad that it's included. We have a separate pouch here, which I'm going to open. And in this pouch includes the, yep, looks like the USB-A to USB Type-C cable. So if you want to plug your camera into your computer for any given reason or to also, uh, I believe, use for charging purposes. We have in that other section, the power adapter that comes with the camera. Just gonna move some stuff around here. We have what looks to be the battery. So in this case, uh, Sony will give you an NPFC 100 battery, just like all their other uh, A7, A9, A1 style bodies use. Now this camera does not come with a BCQZ1 charger, which is sort of Sony's official battery charger. I think you need to purchase one of their uh, R models or S models or not the basic uh, models as Sony likes to now call them. But this is pretty much in line with what Sony did with the a7 III, so can't say I'm surprised by that. Without further ado, we have the actual a7 IV itself. Before I open that, just want to double check that there's nothing else in this box, and there is not. And so let's take a look at it. Uh, all right. Here we go. So put that on the side here. And so we have the Sony a7 IV. First time I'm actually getting to take a nice look at it, get it in the hands here. Uh, just looking at the body here, you have something that definitely I will say looks and feels a lot like the a7S III in a lot of different ways, right? Um, so of course we have the flip screen, which now flips out from the side here, uh, rather than from the top, like with the a7S III. So we can rotate that back, close that up. And from the rear of the camera, it really looks a lot like the a7S III in terms of the buttons and the layout. Also, I will say the feel of the buttons, sort of the tactile, a uh, more responsive feel of the buttons that offer a little more feedback than say like on the a7 III and Sony's older models. You have, of course, the SD and CF Express Type A card door, or uh, at least one of the slots supports CF Express Type A. Now in terms of the ports and the port doors on the side, something that again really looks a lot like the a7S III, nearly identical to that in terms of its layout. 
Also again, nice that these doors don't dangle around and they just kind of stay in place firmly and also close up nice and easily. You have sort of the hot shoe cover, which much like any other Sony standard camera, you also have the battery door and compartment on the bottom with a quarter 20 thread. Not too much different going on there. Now one interesting thing that's actually changed with this model actually refers to sort of what's going on on the top here. So as you can see, we now have the record button also, just like the a7S III placed along the top. But we have a separate mode dial that does not include a locking mechanism like the S-Series or the R-Series cameras seem to have. I'm not sure why Sony puts the locking mechanism on like the R and the S and the A9 and all the other bodies, but they don't on say this or the a7 III. But one interesting detail is that we have this separate switch which can be used to change between the photo, video, and S and Q modes, mainly so that they're independent of say aperture priority or shutter priority or any of these other custom modes. So that's a nice change to see. I'm definitely curious to see if Sony's going to move this sort of mode dial separation to the other models, like, I don't know, the a7R5 once that comes out. Again, I do want to note grip-wise that in the hands this feels just like an a7S III. Very, very similar, and so this is going to be great for doing handheld work. I shoot a lot of handheld video now, so this plus the steady shot active stabilization, which is also in this camera, is going to be great for that. And so I'm going to clean up some of this stuff here, throw a battery and a lens on this, and let's see what this starts to look like. Alright, so I cleaned up the space a bit, now we have my 24 to 70 G Master here, which I'll use to just try out as a lens. A fresh NPFC 100 battery that I know is charged, and an SD card. So, let's get this thing ready to go. Now it's worth noting the first slot does support UHS-2 and CF Express Type A, but the second slot is UHS-2 only. Uh, so if you do have CF Express Type A cards, they will be good in the first slot but not the second. I will be probably doing a separate video just on memory cards. I did a separate one, which I'll link to up here, that a lot of it will still hold, but there are a few updates that are worth pointing out for the a7 IV, so definitely stay tuned for that. We'll put a battery in. And first look at the sensor, a thing of beauty. And so here we go, we have the Sony a7 IV with the 24-70G Master. Looks good. I will, I'm sure, be using this combination a lot to shoot, so let's turn this thing on. And so here we go, first look at this camera. Maybe I'll uh, show you what I can see in the screen here. Uh, definitely some changes, which is actually nice to sort of see in the layout here. One thing I'll also note is that the articulation of the flip screen Definitely feels a bit more firm than it does, say, in the a7S III, and so uh, I'm wondering maybe if Sony improved that or worked on that, but that is a good thing to see since flip screens are always a little bit flimsy anyway. Now one other thing I also want to point out is that I did a separate review on the small rig half cage for the a7S III. This is the 3193 or 3237, uh, and you can check that review out, I will link to it above. But small rig has actually updated their description of the cage to be not just for the a7S III, but the a7IV as well. And I did get a chance to test this out separately and can confirm that it fits the a7IV perfectly. So not just a hack if you're attempting to use it with it, it is actually designed also for that camera body and it works with it just fine. So I'm gonna get this set up here quickly so I can film a couple things with it and we can take some of our first, at least video shots of the a7IV. All right, so first shot here in sort of a selfie mode with the a7IV. This is in 4K 24 frames a second, XAVCS, 10-bit 422, S-Cinetone, Active Stave, and uh, this is what it looks like. But apart from those first shots, let's actually try a couple of different angles here. So I usually film these talking heads with my a7S III, which is what you're seeing right now. And then this little side product angle I've been using, I've been doing with my a7 III. But I want to switch my main angle to the a7IV just to get a sense of what that looks like. So let's do that. All right, and now I've changed places here. So we have the a7IV on my 20mm f1.8 at around f5.6 filming me. And then I have switched and put the 24 to 70 on my a7S III. So this is what this exact same angle looks like with the a7 IV in its 4K 24 frames a second mode doing sort of an oversampled 7K downsampling of that, which we'll see what that looks like. 
Now, the other cool thing that you can do, of course, with the a7 IV is you have APS-C crop mode in 4K. So if I wanted to do crop mode in 4K with a shot like this, that would look something like this, which looks a little tight given what I see on screen here. And for some good measure, here's some B-roll with the a7 IV in 4K60, which is of course always in the APS-C crop mode using XAVCS compression. So I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of the a7 IV right now. Hopefully you might be as well since you're currently watching a7 IV footage. I have a lot more to cover with this camera, so definitely subscribe if you're an a7 IV owner or will be at some point. Of course, I have a bunch of other Sony content on this channel, which you can check out as well. For now, that is all I have to say, and thanks for watching.